or at the worst. Why do I keep saying that line? Because I'm trying to film a video. That's why I keep saying the line. They keep messing up in the video. So that's why I keep saying that. So welcome back, guys. My name's Ethan. I'm a single father to this dude. That was Lincoln. Who was talking to you on a wave? And in today's video, we're talking about the importance of how when our kids are at their worst, that's actually when they need us the most. Now, in parenting, in the in world, in society, and how I was raised as well, it was kind of like taught the opposite. It's like when the kids are at their worst, like that's when we shame them. That's when we punish them. That's when we make them more upset. That's when we cause them to have like timeouts and we send them to sit on their own or in isolation. That's when we hit and punish them. That's when we do all sorts of manipulation and deceitful tactics when the child is like at their most vulnerable moments. And so what are we teaching that child? That it's like, you have to do this on your own, that you like, you can't, you can't show that side of you. And like, you're all alone dealing with all of these big emotions that are going on. And it's incredibly overwhelming for children. And I think it goes to raise adults who don't know how to control or be in control of their emotions and just react to situations. So um, this experience that we had yesterday, was one of the toughest to navigate with Lincoln. It was one of the biggest tantrums he's thrown in a very long time. And it was also the one where it could have led to the greatest consequence and greatest disaster. And I'll get to sharing that right now. So we're at the seawall yesterday and it's kind of just like this wall with this big beach area and there's a sea. And we're just playing, we're like spraying each other with this water gun that he has and he's like chasing me all over. And, and you're also gonna hear background noise from him because he's obviously playing. And he ended up falling. And he ended up like falling and falling over. And there was a bunch of people, Lincoln, I'm filming a video, please. Thank you. And there's a bunch of people who saw him fall. And he must have been just radically embarrassed, like really, really embarrassed because he ended up like crying and throwing like this huge like fit. And then two, it was also the time in which he was like, it was two o'clock, so he's really tired. Normally around those times, like I try to have more of a quiet kind of time. That way he can like relax and kind of ground and kind of just be centered to navigate that hour, hour and a half of like extreme chaos. Otherwise, if that's the case, just because he's tired and irritable. So it was like right at that premium time where he did fall, felt that radical amount of embarrassment and also the tiredness and crankiness on top of it. And he ended up like running away. And normally historically in the past, Lincoln will run away for a certain distance and he'll feel a little bit of separation anxiety and then he'll come back. That's usually how it tends to be. He runs just to get some space and then he'll come back. And so I let him run. I let him kind of do his thing. He ended up like walking up the stairs and kind of like heading towards the path. And then at the top of the path, there's like another path that intersects and keeps you going. But then there's also a road and a crosswalk. And so he kind of like, he was, he was about halfway up the steps, which is probably about 50 feet from me, maybe 40 feet, maybe 30 feet I'm not really the greatest judge it was decently far and then he kept on going and then like soon it kicked in and like okay he's not coming back and so I started to chase him I started to kind of like run after him and he kept on like running quicker and quicker and then like I get up to the top of the stairs and he's on the path as well Lincoln can you please stop that you can play with it afterwards okay, okay. and I was at the top and he was like just at the crosswalk and he ended up like started crossing the road and so there's a couple things here. Number one, I did see him look both ways and there were no cars. Like he was obviously aware of that, which is a huge thing. That's a huge step that he was able to look. And at the same time, he was crossing, a four-year-old was crossing the street on his own. And it's like, I don't know. I don't think that that's something that I want him to do. I'm not, I'm not willing to risk that yet. Maybe when he's a little bit older, he can cross the road on his own. Awesome, but being four years old, I'm not quite there with that. Like that is still something where like I let him have a lot of freedom, but that to me is still something that, that sometimes can be out of control for him. He doesn't see the cars. He doesn't become aware of that stuff enough to be able to kind of like navigate that. And so this runner ended up like stopping him on the street and he ended up running even further away and like off the street and crying and throwing this huge tantrum. And then for probably about the next 15 minutes, he was just bawling and bawling and bawling and screaming and like having a hard time breathing and coughing things up and all this kind of jazz. And I was just sitting there with him. And it was funny because like, when I first saw him do that, there was a part of me that would like wanted just to go to shame, wanted just to like go to like belittling him and kind of like making him feel ashamed for crossing the road and doing the things that he did and th for throwing this huge fit and for running away from me. But then it clicked and it really clicked and it's like I saw me, myself let that part of me go and it was like, okay, he doesn't need any of that now. He doesn't need to understand that he didn't need, that he shouldn't have crossed the road. 
crossed the road or started crossing the road. What he needs now is a safe space for him to express himself, for him to get grounded, for him to feel his feelings. He needs that space more than ever because he's already feeling enough shame from everybody watching him and everybody looking around him and the runner who stopped him and all that kind of stuff. So he doesn't need my pain and my shame on top of that. What he needs is just a safe space. So we ended up just like walking through it, following our breath, like breathing. I was trying to help him guide him, follow his breath. And I've been giving him that cue of like, Lincoln, follow your breath. And you'll see him go, and you'll like lose it and then you'll come back to it. And so I was just sitting there just like with him, just trying to help him navigate that. And then afterwards about the 15 minutes, it's literally 15 minutes long that we're just sitting there like on the side of like the path, just helping him navigate that. And afterwards I was like, when do you want to talk about this? And because I think that that's huge. I think that there are times in which we get to talk about things as soon as they happen, but we also get to let them have time and space because it's like, it's like when I remember when I was in a relationship with Lincoln's mother, um, we'd have these fights and I would just want space so badly. I just want like 15 minutes, 20 minutes to just like let go of the energy, let go of everything that's there and then come back to you because the way that we're communicating, the way that we're talking, the way that we're functioning is, was not working. And it even happens now, even in co-parenting. I'm still nice. You picked your lobster. We had an argument a couple of days ago where it was just like, as soon as we started, it was just like, get, yeah, I need space. Like I need 15, 20 minutes. Like call me back. Awesome. And we ended up talking a couple days later, but that space is so needed for me because I need to like process and let go and really begin to see clearly of like how I'm acting instead of just basing my reactions on my emotions, which I don't believe are necessarily true. And so I gave Lincoln the choice of like, when do you want to talk about it? He chose to talk about it when we got home. So we had about a 20 minute walk to talk about when we got home and we sat at the table and we went through the whole thing of like, what could we have done differently? What are we going to do next time? Uh, should we run that far away from dad? Should we cross the road? No. And he began to kind of like build this story of like, okay, I won't do that next time. I won't run away as far. I won't do those things. And it's just like, it was cool too, because in those moments, I also get to learn, like it was my responsibility for the whole situation occurring because I didn't have to, Lincoln, I'm gonna be done soon. I'm gonna be done soon. I didn't have to let Lincoln run away as far as I did because that was just me acting from previous experience of like historically in the past, he's gotten somewhere and he's always come back, but that might not be the truth for every situation. So always being aware of that and even letting go of that story that he does that, which, which is huge. So. I just really wanted to share the importance of that because it could have went sideways guys. Like it could have went really sideways. Um, if I did end up shaming him, like if I did just start like going off on him for crossing the road, going off on him for running away, going off on him for throwing a big tantrum, going off on him for all this stuff and making him feel less than. And, and it's so important because like in those situations, I just help him regulate his emotions and he comes back to this state of groundedness, comes back to the state of kind of like himself where then he can see the decisions he made. But in those moments, he's not thinking clearly at all. It's just like you, just like I, when I'm angry, when you're angry, when we're upset, we don't think clearly when we're calm and peaceful and just like in bliss. It's like, we're thinking very clearly. So why make decisions? Why talk about things when we're in those states? I just don't think it's the greatest. Um, Cause I remember when I was a kid and it sucked. Like it sucked when I did something wrong and I got punished for it. It sucked when I did something wrong and I got shamed for it. It sucked when I did something wrong and that's all that they talked about. And it was like great right in the experience when all I wanted was like a hug or like a safe space to just be able to process the feelings that I'm already feeling. Like that's the gnarly thing is a lot of kids know that what they're doing is wrong and know that what they're doing, their, their actions are incoherent, but they're just dealing with so much right now that they can't see that clearly. Only with space can they begin to see that clearly. So it's just really, really important. I believe to that when our kids are at their worst is actually when us, they need us the most. And that's why I do things like time ins. Like I don't do time outs. I do time ins now. So like I don't send Lincoln off anywhere. Like I do time ins with them. I'll go somewhere with them. I'll go to the bedroom and we'll read a book or we'll like cuddle or we'll like tickle each other. or We'll try to get rid of whatever energy we're feeling. I don't do any sort of punishment, any sort of discipline, any sort of anything. The only thing that I really do is just, connect before correct. Like that's the biggest thing that has honestly, like that is the only fundamental knowing and principle in which I parent by is connection before correction. And, and simultaneously when you do connect with your child in such a way 
the behavior automatically corrects itself because it is just the behavior is a symptom of an emotion that is occurring underneath the surface. And when we deal with that emotion, when we deal with that thing that is under the surface, then the behavior, the symptoms begin to correct themselves automatically. It's kind of like when we have strep throat. We have all of these symptoms of strep throat, but when we get antibiotics to deal with the actual bacterial infection that's happening under the surface, then the symptoms of strep throat begin to disappear. Boom, 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 boom. And that's exactly how everything operates, I believe, in this world. And there's even things that are below even emotions and feelings and thoughts and stories and all that kind of, kind of stuff. So, but that's it. I don't want to get too much into it, but that was pretty crazy. So if you enjoyed today's video, please let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think about this whole thing? Should we shame our kids as soon as they do something bad or should we give them a space and help them create a space to navigate? Navigate that on their own with us with our parents the guys are you done silly are you done are you done are you sure you're done yeah you are done so yeah comment let me know if you guys do agree or if you guys disagree it doesn't matter to me um, I'm just here to have an open conversation because I know that I do not know everything and I could also be wrong on something so feel free to correct me if you do know something or want to have a conversation that goes deeper into the truth, boom, 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 boom. Much love, guys. Peace, please. Peace, bless, grease, love, and light, yo. Bye-bye.